Okay, since there are just a few of us who've um, joined so far, let's do something a little bit different um, today. So let's start off by, um, I'll skip Professor Momo, but I will have the two uh, others on the call right now with us, um, Mr. Idris and Mr. Odeku. Um, if you can say hello and um, just uh, give a short introduction on who you are and um, why you wanted to make sure to join the call today. So we'll hello. Yes, we'll start. Is that, is that Mr. Idris? Yes, um, this is um, Medele Idris. Uh, my name is um, Engineer Bamidele Idris. I'm the um, CEO for Get Jobs, uh, Get Jobs Nigeria, and also um, one of the head of the committees for Nigerian Society of Engineers, Ikeja Branch. Excellent. I actually didn't know that before. Thanks for letting us know. And why did you join? Uh, what are some of the reasons you joined the, the call today? Yeah. Yes. Um, there are several issues we have. Um, it's it's really enormous uh, in terms of um, the uh, metering issues, uh, then the pricing issues. I, for one, I had to write um, the customer care uh, services for Ikeja Electric just um, some weeks ago. And um, the response time, not only in terms of the response time for email, and also, but it has to do with the metering, uh, the time it takes for um, assessment and mapping of various environments, and also uh, it has to do with um, virtually everybody that surrounds me has to go through the black market um, method to actually get meters. I hear people spending up to four months, five months just to get one single meter in their location. And this is um, a big issue. Like me, I've done, I actually filled my form, KYC form, but till now I have not gotten any response. I sent a, re a reminder email and um, all I'm seeing is uh, errors. It's as if the email is not even working. The customer care service email is not even working. So those are some of the issues that um, I'm having. Then, of course, I just learned on, um, sorry, the, the, my, my voice is echoing. Okay. Okay. So, um, though I learned that there is a high sorry, level. Sorry, I just, I just want to say I will give just another few seconds so that um, Mr. Odeku can introduce himself as well. So go ahead. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I think I've done, I've done enough. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Appreciate, yes. I, think, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Od uh, Adeshola Odeku, could you please introduce yourself? Okay, I think he's still on mute um, and that's fine. So, um, we'll just go ahead and get started with the uh, webinar for today. And um, we had probably at least 50 people call in on Wednesday. And unfortunately, we had to move this uh, webinar to today. So I know that people will be calling in as we go. Um, this webinar is being recorded. Um, so just I just want to give you that um, um, uh, disclaimer. So let's get started with uh, Professor Momo. Professor Momo is um, an amazing person. Um, I, I met him through IEEE PES uh, several years ago. He's uh, an incredibly accomplished professor of uh, Howard University and has um, a plethora of skill sets where power and energy are concerned. So, so it was very exciting to hear um, when he got the, the, the position or was put in position by uh, the presidential office to be to lead um, NERC. So with that, I just want to say hello to Professor Momo and Professor Momo, please give us a brief description of your uh, um, uh, introduction of your bio and, and um, I have some questions to ask you 
before we begin the presentation. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Irena, and of course, by Midele and uh, the rest, and of course, uh, Mr. Deku. I appreciate the opportunity to join you all in this webinar. I'm sorry when Wednesday was, um, we were in the middle of a, a, a commission meeting when I got a call from the villa, which we had the vice president, I had to run. So but I thought I would come back, but I couldn't get back on time. So I'm really sorry for the cancellation, which is not avoid, uh, which I wish could be avoidable. Um, as Irena said, um, well, I, I came via Nigeria. I'm a Nigerian. I've been living in the States for more than 40 years, where I went to school, started teaching, do research, went all over uh, research in different areas, not only in power, but using um, emerging, emerging tools to solve problems for efficient, secured, and reliable power networks, either for the Navy, for NASA, for FAA, and of course for utilities. So uh, I would say I have a, a range of uh, both extraterrestrial or non-terrestrial power system a background. But it's all about applying the concept of what you do to improve quality of service, to allow um, critical loads to be served, to provide e uh, efficient algorithms that could make it happen so that you can have a tool that could be used by different agencies. So in a nutshell, I have been fortunate, uh, work with EPRI, work with DOE, work with so many agencies in America, funded by many, by some standard, one of the lucky ones to have been funded a lot by different agencies in America. Graduated many students, some of them are leading engineers, leading professors, or leading vice provost in different schools. And of course, um, we have done a lot in America, written all kinds of books to improve the learning in the power sector, over nine books. But then you do all this in America. The question is, what is next? So it was the next that the President Buhari gave me opportunity to come to Nigeria to serve as Next, uh, the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission chair. So that's where I've been for the last two, uh, two, three years now. I was supposed to have started this work in 2017, but unfortunately there was a big problem between the regulator, the, uh, the, the National Assembly and the executive. So they couldn't take us until 2018. So I hit the ground running when I started I come in here from practice to theory or theory to practice, try to turn neck around as a learning environment where the staff with the advanced degree can be put to work. So it's a lot of things I could say about myself, but maybe I will write a book later on myself. <laughs> so let me stop right there right now, but there's still a lot to do. Uh, I might return back to the state soon and do more work. So but we have sell a seed here in Nigeria and that seed is for sure is going to germinate. Right. Um, I'm, I'm serious about that. A, a staff just left my office. He has taken the interface challenge that Disco and TCN has a problem with. They have an increase in generation now. Nobody know why, but I can tell you why. It is my unit staff that I push them to do the work to make sure there is proper handshaking between TCN and Disco hence the improved generating, uh, generation in the country. Since these kids have been working, there have been minimum collapses. Anyway, let's stop there, Irena. That's, I know I have a lot to great. say. <laughs> you can it's, say a privilege. it's a privilege to have you working in Nigeria. <laughs> yeah. uh, definitely a privilege. Um, let me, uh, okay, can you move your camera a little bit so that we can see your full face? Oh my uh, God. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's perfect. That's perfect. Okay. Yeah. Let me put my glasses. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So as I told you, um, this is not really a lightning round, but um, a number of people who are going to receive this video are um, 
going to be in college and in high school, and they're going to want to understand um, how you chose the path uh, to get, you know, getting into power and energy. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions um, around that, that to help guide them. Um, okay. Why? Why or how did you choose to go um, to, to work in the power and energy sector? Okay. Um, I think somehow I had the exposure to what power engineering is as a young kid in Nigeria. Uh, I was amused by people in my neighborhood who were going, who were in the university at ABU, come back home on long back, and I would volunteer myself to go out with them. So I could just enjoy the practical of uh, practical side of what I was thinking I was doing in physics and so on. But by the time I went out of the Nigeria and went home to the US, in my university, you are allowed to take as many electives as you want. So I must be one of those who took many electives, communication electives, telecoms, antenna, power, computer engineering, and of course, communication. So I just took all of it, <laughs> got more, more, more credit than I'm supposed to have. Well, by the time I went to graduate school, I had to converge to something. So I went to, again to communication. I started working at Bell Labs. Bell Labs, all of you know, that's one of the um, research frontier of a telephone industry in the past. So my love for mathematics was very high. And therefore, it's like very readily available to electrical engineering, where most people suffer if they go to electrical with that mathematics background. So at the end of the day, I begin to see myself. Am I just going to be talking electronics, power every day? So I say, no, no, no. I want to do more work in communication research, more work in mathematics. So before I know it, I was diverging everywhere until one professor at University of Penn so me converge, please converge, Let's do one thing, go ahead and do your power. I said, me and power? Before I know it, I became a power, uh, commun a power and communication person. I became artificial intelligence person trying to apply it to power. I became <laughs> computational person trying to solve very high level mathematical problem in power. And that got my, my interest. And when I started working, as a professor, as assistant professor, associate, I was getting a lot of grants to solve new problems from DOE, from EPRI, so, and from NSF. That sort of motivated me that, wow, I have the tools and I have the problem and the problems are there, but I have new tools that I can use to solve this problem. That is how I ended up becoming in great, uh, in, embedded in power. And I see Nigeria as a challenge where they also have problems but no tools. So I begin to dive also bring Nigeria and USA together. I started a, a program called ICPSOP, which is International Conference on Power System Planning and Operation, where I bring my colleagues from the US and we go to Nigeria or go to Ghana or go to Syria, uh, what is it called? South Africa. We went all over the place sharing knowledge. So we identify with it problems of the country. I started teaching many of the engineers in Nigeria. So this is how my depth of power, not only professoring in, in, in power, but I begin to solve real plastic critical problems. So whether it's voltage collapse, whether it's distribution automation, stability problem, planning. So I got involved and I got a lot of team um, col collaboration with my American professors, colleagues, and Nigerian professors. So that's how I got deeper and deeper and deeper. So coming to NEC was a privilege, but before NEC, I was privileged to work at the National Science Foundation as a program director for four years, where I run the program for the whole country, where I develop an initiative called EPNIS, Elect Electric Power Network Security and Efficiency, which was a forerunner for deregulation. <laughs> so we got to come up with tools that interface with economics and power and control and communication. So I just find myself lucky that I have to come to Nigeria to share some of that knowledge and have good people to work with. 
So that's really my little talk on what has taken me this far. Am I enjoying it? I'm still enjoying it very, very well. <laughs> very, very well. Will I do it the same thing all over again? I will, I will. That's great. That's awesome. I, I wanted to pick out a few things from what you mentioned. It, it took um, a professor in the University of Penn to tell, you know, to help guide you towards, hey, it's time to converge. And so for the young people who are uh, uh, watching, um, you know, it's, it's always good on the path to have some kind of mentor uh, lead you. Um, professor Momo is, has been an awesome mentor to, to several people and ha has helped guide them in their careers as well. And so even as you pursue whatever you're pursuing, um, it's, it's good to, to have an ear out for uh, when someone is trying to guide you uh, towards uh, the place that you should go. For Professor Momo, he was, um, as you can see, you know, even as, as a young uh, person, very smart, very good at many different um, uh, parts of electrical engineering. So he could have chosen anything, um, but you see how he was able to apply each um, skill set back into power and it's grown that over time. He also kept mentioning um, creating tools. So you can see that that's part of one of his uh, strong points is creating tools for success in the power and energy um, sector. Okay, um, for the sake of time, I, I was going to ask, um, okay, well, if you can answer this in a very short, uh, with a very short answer, Professor Momo, what made okay. you choose the academic path to, to become okay. a, a professor? Is it uh, as the grant started, that's kind of what helped you decide to become a professor? Okay, well, simply put, I, when I was a young boy, I was not only a good student, but I was also helping many people. So I wasn't good for myself. I tried to bring other people up and they even give me a nickname, professor. <laughs> so my older friends in the neighborhood um, where I was growing up also saw some good thing in me and they keep telling me, maybe one day you'll be a great engineer, you'll be a good professor. And when I went to undergraduate school, then I was surprised. I, they gave me office space to teach my colleagues, my classmates. That was the beginning of myself. Eh? So I'm gonna be a young teacher one day. So it came naturally to me that I like to explain things. I like to assume one important thing that whatever I can do, somebody else can do. So I don't assume that I'm so brilliant that other people cannot do the work. Yes, I got many awards for be from the Reg, from Reagan, I was presidential awardee, Senate awardee, uh, IEEE awardee, every kind of award. But what I do for my student, my passion is teaching. Second passion is research. Third passion is giving back. <laughs> Awesome, teaching. So I've turned neck, I've turned neck into a learning environment. <laughs> and they may not like me for that when I live here. <laughs> have come after me and we teach and teach and teach. <laughs> that's, that's excellent, that's amazing. Thank you so much for answering that question. Okay, we're going to get into the meat of the presentation now, which I know everyone's been waiting for. Um, I'm going to let, I'm, I'm sharing my screen now. Um, and I want to take it to slideshow. Professor Momo, do let me know if, if you can see it and let me know when to move to another slide. If you okay. want to be the host, just let me know and I can make you the host now. But no can problem. everybody see the screen? You cannot, if, uh, Mr. Idris, I can see, you, can you see the screen? I can, yes, I can, I can see the screen. Okay. Excellent. Yes. I'm going to slideshow. So, Professor yes. Momo, it's, it's um, on you now. So, feel free okay. to... Okay, let's go. Well, the goal here is to present what I think is the current concerns or status of the power supply in Nigeria with all the issues that come with it. As chair, obviously, I have to be on the top of every problem. So, the summary presentation here is ongoing current problem of the country which I have to work on every single day with my colleagues. Let's move on. <clears throat> so the, basically these are things you already know, it's just basic statistics of Nigerian challenge in the past, the, facing the challenge of past sector, infrastructure challenges, our comparative analysis with other African countries, and what are we gonna do with respect to metering, tariff, uh, goals of NEC, uh, past sector recovery that you must have heard about, and 
for me in the next step. What are we going to do next? So let's move on. Uh, Nigerian population, as you could tell, they, we are told is 200 million plus, but 55% of us do not have access to power. That means over 45, if not 50% of us or more are what? Are in darkness on a given day. Wow, a country with 200 million means they cannot do work. If our energy is ability to do work, that means most of our population People are not engaged in useful work that is electrified, uh, that is based on electricity. So according to the World Bank, we also said that, look, 41% of business in Nigeria, uh, businesses own their own power. If you are making sure, uh, if you go to a particular uh, commercial industry, they, will, they have their own generator, okay, but it has its own shoe making supply. If you go to a, um, a, a particular, uh -huh. don't worry, there was light off, but it's okay. Um, so if you go to some hotels, they all have their own power supply. Can you imagine? So they are generating their own power. So our country is really, really in trouble. We are behind. The GDP of the country is still as low as 410 million from the World Bank statistics. And again, Nigeria is able to generate only 126 kilowatt per capita, can you imagine? So that makes us look terrible, terrible. Every time I show this, people say, well, uh, don't, don't compare with the rest of the world. We have our own problem. I say, we have our problem, but we need to solve it. Let's go on. Now, you hear that it's about 5,500 megawatts, not small M, big M, as our base load, when you take a snapshot by disco in a given hour, but the base load is less than the capital load that is being taken on a given day. Like I said, there are many other people generating power through the industry of grid power supply. So there's a lot of, lot of money being wasted. People are doing their own thing just to make life happen. As I said before, or maybe I said it too quickly, there's a lot of challenge in the interface. I will show you the interface shortly. The interface between gas generation, transmission and distribution, there is a mismatch. And that has caused a lot of problem for the Nigerian power sector to be um, fruitful, uh, to be reliable or functional the way we want to see it. So the transfer of power from the source to the customer is, hint is hindered by the interface measure, the uh, challenge. It could be lack of right? uh, simple thing like um, the closers, simple thing like um, transformer that is not functional, simple thing like they don't cut their trees. So many small, small things. In fact, as a former research consultant advisor to NEPA or TCN, I went around the country and I knew it's a small little thing that they have not taken care of. So when I came here and start, people start telling me imbalance, I know what your imbalance is. Lack of innovation is another one. Lack of investment is another one. You don't maintain your system. So how can you have a secured and reliable network? You can't. Let's go. So. I was showing you that the country Nigeria, 200 million, generates about 6,800. The country South Africa has less number of 60 million and they generating 50,000 megawatts. Can you imagine? Egypt, <laughs> our Egypt, Egypt, just Egypt. I've been there many times. 100 million people, half of Nigeria, but they are generating over 180,000 megawatts. They are, and we are just six to seven. Oh, Ghana, next door. 30 million people generate almost uh, 2,500 2, megawatts. If you leave them alone, they will catch up with us and outpass, outpace us. Morocco, Upper Africa, about 40 million people, again, generate over 28,000 megawatts, not million. <laughs> so, so that's what I think we should move on, yeah. So here is the big misalignment. If you ask me how many problems do we have in Nigeria, we have two problems. Technical challenge, this is it, in the value chain. And this is a serious problem that this country is faced with. All the innovation, all the initiative that is coming from everywhere in the world is to solve this problem. What is the problem? We have standard generation due to gas. We don't have solid gas, sometimes we have wet gas. 
So we the available gas to power the store generators that we have in the market or in the stations, excuse me. We don't have gas, so we can't power our generators. So another thing, the generation therefore available one that is can be powered, can be generated um, up, up running on a given day, it's about 5,000 megawatts for 200 million people. Then we have to in, transfer that through a transmission cap uh, that is about 7,000 megawatts. It could be 20, they will tell you it will be 50 tomorrow, but it's not there today. Then we have distribution networks that is weak and fragile, cannot even take what transmission is made available. So we now have problems to, to face. Inadequate infrastructure faces Nigeria and it's still going on. No, no investment. If the investment is put, put in the wrong thing. Obsolete equipment, they've been there maybe as long as the last 20, 30 years. Nobody is maintaining them or repairing them. So at the end of the day, you have a big mismatch between the what? The value chain. This mismatch causes a lot of trouble, which you and I can say, well, commercial losses, technical losses. I have put together a group of five staff. I call them the strategic unit. They worry about this and find out to the first ETCN and this call to work together and see what they can do on a promissory note that they will fix the transformer in their, in their station or that the disco will take power when it is given to them. So all this is part of the work I am doing. It's been a lot of good work and especially this interface problem. And it's the reason why Siemens is coming to Nigeria, they also think they can provide solutions to Siemens to, of Siemens to, for, to solve the interface problem. It's the reason why World Bank is giving money. They think they can help us to solve the value chain problem. So this scenario, is an important one. And I will talk more about it, let's move on. Now, we have load forecast in Nigeria. The demand, if you just in the year 2020, for distribution is 8,000, but what we have currently is 5,000. So hopefully in 2025, there'll be more. Transmission disco demand is 9,000 9, megawatt, but so far available is 7,000. In 2020, that was what we forecast. So if you keep on going on, there is a, a lot of studies going on. So for researchers from JICA, Japanese people, and from Siemens, all of everybody is doing studies, 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 and collecting money so that we can solve the problem. Question is, how do we coordinate all these studies? How do we realize the results we want to get from the study? Those are big questions. Next one. Okay, so I want to just tell you, no, back again. So as I said, there are a series of problems going on, uh, solution in place. By 2020 quarter four, where we are now, uh, we have put together a performance improvement plan for every disco to have a plan in the next five years, how they're going to make sure meters are there, feeders are working, all these, the closers are working, the, uh, all the phase shifters, if we have one in Nigeria is working or whatever. So these are the PIP, we call it performance improvement plan. We are monitoring this. They've signed on the dotted line that they will do it. And I have a team I put together here who will be following them. Again, as I told you, for five days one time, I bring the disco and TCN to the building and ask them to solve this interface challenge. Every one of them pointing fingers at each other. At the end of the day, we agree and resolve how to solve it. So it's ongoing as well. As you know, NEC is also doing a lot of work in the area of making sure that the customer's uh, power receive is reliable. So we decided to worry about the 33 and 11 KV feeders, which brings us to make sure that we are smart metering. And as I said, there's presidential initiative and the World Bank initiative that is supporting all of the infrastructural problem. Let's go to the next slide. The next slide is commercial. It's more like commercial. You will hear in Nigeria, they will say aggregate technical collection and, co collection and commercial losses. In which case, low tariff, it means that you are not able to charge the actual price of electricity in Nigeria. So, so Disco at the end of the day cannot maintain or improve their facility. So because of the low tariff. And in that sense, government is putting money to make up the low tariff, such as 
making sure that eh, subsidies, 213 billion from governments in 2015, since Buhari came in, President Buhari came in, 701 billion was put in. Recently, another 600 billion. So total of 1.3 trillion Nigeria money in Naira has been put into, into what? Into making sure that the disco continue to run and the generating company continue to run. So that money is used to pay for the Jankos since disco and, and customer couldn't pay if that is true. And then we took a loan recently cost 750 million from the World Bank on the PSRP. Is all this coming together implies what? Our country is running the power sector on subsidy, on loan from different places, and we still haven't got it right. But that is because of low tariff and poor management, um, lack of investment coming from outside. So the energy theft is another energy that is money. So people are still stealing power. So we have to worry about that. How do you minimize that? There are communities in the country who say, well, we, we have energy, we have uh, oil in our neighborhood, we have water in our neighborhood, so we're, gonna, we're not going to pay because we own it. So that's host community that could stop a uh, uh, lot of disco people to collect money. There is also a lot of money lost to the uh, what I call MDA debts, which is called the, you, you are talking about ministry departments, agencies, they, they use electricity, but they don't pay. So we are working on how to overcome all this, thing, reducing this MDA debt, minimizing energy theft, changing the low tariff, and convincing the host community to please pay for electricity use. Let's go. Yeah. So if you want to really enjoy what I've said, if you look at ministry, department, and agency, each of the discos are captured here. It means non-payment to the disco, each of them. Can you imagine a moral hazard in Cardinal Disco alone, 460 million. Abuja Disco, AEDC, 356 million. Oh, that is what they could not collect from M uh, MDA. So you continue like that all the way to Bini Disco, 44 million. Enugu uh, Disco is 90 million. Overall, if you look at this part of the slide, you will see that it's over so many billions of dollars that is out, is out there that we have not been able to collect. So we are working on that. We are asking government to please take the money up front for each of the MDS and pay directly, pay the electricity bill directly to the disco. So that's coming up soon. That's, that's really what we are working on. We are working on this very, very seriously. Even the state level, they are also not paying. Uh -huh. We have to worry about local government. <laughs> Everybody is so human, left and right. So they expect electricity to happen. Let's go on. Now, if you look at this, what I'm, there's another area of challenge, like the status of Nigerian challenge problem. I just show here about 10%, sorry, 10,000 Nigeria are registered customers of Disco. We did enumeration and we find how many of them are registered. Only 41% of this number have been metered. So that means there's a challenge, a lacuna you would like to call it, a gap. How do we make up 41% and have been metered? What happens to the rest? There's no meter. So how do, we, how do they pay? They pay through electric, they pay, they pay through a lot of, they, they have to do estimated billing, bogus billing, which nobody really like. So which means that if you look at each of the, Discos, you could see 20% Yola, 21% Kano, you can imagine, of paid bill or meter, 21, 32% of their customers. So it's a terrible thing. All discos combined is 41%. So I think these are serious things to look at. A country that is selling power and doesn't have a meter to meter its people, how much, to what extent is it? Is the collection going? So the collection losses therefore become high, and of course, a lot of laws and rules are being proposed to ensure that um, the commercial losses is reduced. So that is why in the new direction, the new initiative now is to provide meters so that people can pay for electricity they use, 
and they will optimize or they will save energy that they don't want to pay for. <laughs> so everyone, every, every one of us who are customers now begin to ask questions. I don't want to pay, so therefore I won't misuse power. So a lot of need for uh, demand side management in Nigeria. Let's move on. So I think metering policy, I think as you have, must have read recently, we want to close the gap of 6 million Nigerians to have meters. We have, we have due enumeration went all over the villages. And we now say every disco must supply meter. And because they didn't do it, we introduced MAP, which is meter asset provider, which is an independent investor who comes in and provide money and put meter in single phase, three phase meter to different customers. But it ran into a roadblock because as we were doing it, 35% uh, uh, custom duty was slashed on the on map provider. So they couldn't really sell the, the meter for the price we agreed. So that slowed everything down on map, uh, the role of map in the country. But thank God uh, and the president as well, presidential initiative on metering has now removed that 35% custom duty. So, and also in terms of meter importation. That also leads to a new initiative by the government to begin to increase in a hurry up to this 60 million within two years by doing local production and manufacturing of meters. So I say to people, if you want to make money, if you want to get in business in Nigeria of money making, get in the production, get in manufacturing of meter because it's gonna be going on and on and on. The losses, ATCRC losses, is also coupled with this metering policy. So we are forcing this code to please reduce the technical losses. Collection must go up and come and also um, the commercial losses, which is true to theft has to up to reduce. So we are imposing a lot of standards, monitoring and evaluation. We have different members of the commission who are very busy running around and making sure they follow the DISCO and the TCN so that we can now immediately have incentive to improve um, the metering problem in Nigeria. It has to follow a particular standard. So we have to make sure it's not just any meter, some smart meter will come here, they have to satisfy metering code that is already approved by Nigeria, by NEC. And of course, specification has to be given thorough attention. Capping was another thing we, we introduced recently, in fact, by Monday, a revised capping initial order will be out, I will be signing. What that means is that if you don't have meter, there is a maximum amount of money you must pay as a customer. You cannot be, you cannot take advantage of customers who are not metered and you start charging them bogus money. So this assume that the capping that is cap pin of estimated billing. That means cap the estimation in such a way that my neighbor who has meter is paying 10,000 10, naira a month. If I don't have meter and I have the same type of house, I should not pay more than 10. That's what capping is doing. We want to use it to discourage, to discourage, I repeat. I have no choice actually because the government of under Buhari has given a, a directive that all customers shall be metered going forward. So, and I think the roadmap or the rollout plan, the rollout plan is already in place. What we're gonna roll out before December is about 1 million. By next year, with another one or 2 million, by 2022, we might have, we will have bust the, the country with meters all over the place. And we also know customers are not required to pay upfront. It will be part of the asset of the discourse, how they will compute the small change that comes from a particular customer. We are going to monitor that as we move, as we move forward. But don't be surprised if you hear the language, Meta is now free in Nigeria. It's because of that statement. But I'm saying as a regulator, there's gonna be a lot of talk, agreement between us and Disco to ensure that they came up come up with proper pricing of their CAPEX, which is called capital expenditure, and OPEX, which is operational expenditure. It is that they will lump all the things so they can get adequate uh, rate, adequate rate. So next one. Yeah, 
So if you if you don't mind, I don't know whether this this is a good slide because at one time in the villa, I have to show this slide in a hurry. It's, um, it's showing that the attached, this slide is showing that for each of the African country, let's just say the West African country, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa countries, includes um, Tanzania and all these other people. If you look at the price of electricity per kilowatt hour, Chad is paying this much. Cape Badi is paying this much. Madagascar, Uganda, Senegal is this much. Kenya, look at how much. And when you look down, 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 where's Nigeria? Uh, where's my country? Second to the last. Yeah, second to the last. I, I'm not able to see, but you have it. And you will see that <laughs> the only country that we beat is, um, which, which country is that? Zambia. Zambia, okay. Yeah. So you look to me, everybody, everybody else eh, is charging more and we're charging less. How could we, we can never balance that equation. So that's one of the challenge of comparing. We are using this to justify why we must have a new paradigm shift of rate design in Nigeria. Let me talk, go to the next slide. Okay, I talked to you about two kinds of shortfall. There's a tariff shortfall where you don't, what is due to be paid, you are not allowed to charge it. So total requirement for Abuja Disco all the way to total, to Ikeja Disco, Just Disco, Kaduna Disco. We are putting here money, Naira, and in billion. We are saying the allowable recovery out of 157 billion, we are saying Disco must pay back 94. So an invoice of 157 is shortage, there's a tariff short of 63 billion. Who is paying for that? Am I, your, our government. So all this column here leads to the fact that when we talk about <laughs> 20, in 2019 alone, you could see the tariff shortfall is this much in billion, just one year alone. If you look at the entire year, you may see that is where we come up with a lot of money. So only 51% of the total revenue is allowed for recovery from customers. So that means we are dependent on our government to recover. Now, government has a problem. Government says we can no longer subsidize electricity a lot. Our schools are not functional. Our roads are not good. Our water is borehole water. And our whatever, whatever, rain, is, everything is hogwash, is not working. So the government now told us, do your rate design differently. But we no longer have going to have money to keep on subsidizing, subsidizing this kind of billion per year. Uh -uh. So if you take it per month, you will see how much is subsidized. So this is where our challenge came from. And I thank God, this is what has consumed my energy in the last one year, if we are able to show you the next slide. <laughs> now, in the last one year, there's something called multi-year tariff order, 2020. We normally, we went around the disco. No, no, the disco came to us and said, they need more money from customers. If we don't give them, they cannot operate well. We said, okay, according to our market rules, we will go around the country together. So we talked to customers and they were also there. And the customer said, okay, in fact, they almost told me in one of the places, we are not averse to paying more money. We are not averse, but we must have quality supply. And that was the supply must be commensurate with the cost. It is there for one, for whatever happened, something happened in my brain or somebody's brain. We call it service-based tariff. So that means a tariff regime where the cost paid by customer will be reflected in the service they get. That is the vulnerable customer, of course, will not have to be affected in the country. We have to protect them. So the new tariff structure is based on this mito that includes exchange rate, inflation rate, GDP, and foreign exchange, all those things. We have to worry about that and increase generation in the country. So having sat down with all the discos, back and forth with our staff members who were 
used to doing this mitral calculation. And we ask this code to give us input. How do you want to increase quality of service and how much you want to charge? It is that that gave us five, one, two, three, four, five band. In fact, it was six, we reduced it to five. Band is customer number and the quality of service and the reliability of service. So in every band, there are three indices, three parameters you look for. Regardless of where it is, the feeder that is enriched in band A has X number of customer connected to that feeder. And the quality of power to that feeder is known, is, improved, is high. And of course, the quality, uh, the reliability of power supply by that feeder is also high. So it is that which led us to the A, B, C, D grant. We went around, we were trying to force the change and we noticed there was gonna be a quarrel between us and civil society, but the president immediately came with wisdom and said, okay, Frank, Frost, D and E. In other words, I will tell you what D and E starts on. These are lifeline customers. But in the ABC, let us find a different way to discount the cost of electricity to customers who are in ABC. So let me show you next slide. Okay, this was just me trying to ask one of my staff to do this. Band D, frozen tariff bandits. So that is no tariff will change for customer who are receiving less than 12 hours. That's why we call them uh, frozen, I see like ice cream, frozen less than 12 hours. If you don't get 12 hours, no change in your tariff. Band E, you are in the worst, you are in a very poor country, you are the poor people, you are taking very small power, four kilowatt, kilo, uh, four. You are just taking less than 500 something. You are paying less. You are vulnerable. You are, this is a poor community, rural areas. So we will make sure they don't pay more than four naira per kilowatt hour. Now, the next one is what I said. People in band A, B, C. I don't want to say they are rich people, but they are lucky. Their infrastructure is already maintained, prepared, and they are serving the quality of service there is increased. We are like where I live. You can only assume that there will be power in, uh, in Asuka or there. You can assume that every day. So what we are saying now is that we, we went further and say, okay, they will pay this amount of, amount of money. Then the people in the, what is they called? Um, in the union, went after us. I was there every day, sometimes in mid, uh, three o'clock in the morning, six, seven o'clock in the morning. We, so they selected government people, including me, and we had a lot of argument. Finally, we have agreement that if we disconnect A, B, and C, and say there'll be no increase, government cannot pay. Definitely government cannot pay. The subsidy will now come back and we don't have money left. So what do we do? Next one. So we now say ban A, we would discount what we were supposed to have paid if there was no, uh, uh, what you call it, um, the, the so-called union people, TUC and um, Nigerian, um, you know them. So for 10% and the relief of in ban B, 10.5%, the relief, because there are many, many people in ban C, we had to showcase that a lot of them are being uh, giving relief. So that means in the minimum hours that people in band C who get more than 12 hours, we will give them a relief. In band B, who, who get more than 16 hours, we'll give them 10.5% 10, 10 of discount. We, and that money is coming from VAT because we don't have money left. So the money from VAT is split in the sector, in the sector is split around A, B, C. Mind you, D, E, and F, and G, whatever they are called, do not have any increase. They are frozen increase. But we cannot maintain frozen increase, fro frozen the increase for A, B, C, D, and still be able to make the market work. So we are lucky. The labor people allow us to, to agree to this particular, which will be 
the order that will be released tomorrow. I just signed the order in this morning, but God willing, it will be released tomorrow. And uh, you, you are the first to hear that I say it will be released tomorrow, right? Just wait. <laughs> but the commission came to work on Saturday and we spent a lot of hours signing, signing, signing. Obviously, mine is one signature for each disco. <laughs> and it's only the last page. So, me and the lawyer. So tomorrow, God willing, it will be announced that we are now back to immediate relief of the end user tariff across ABC and, no, and that everything else is frozen. And then we can continue to work and look at, look forward in December and January, what kind of uh, review according to the law we have to do. It won't remain this forever. No, there's another review. Our review will come up with complete answer. We are depending on government. We rely on policy. If the, if the president said, don't do it, we don't do it. So, but we know what to do when we are given free hand to do the work. Next one. Whew. So I think I just talked about our strategic game when I came here was to make sure we have a sustainable NERSI, the Nigerian electricity supply industry, which we are having now, to improve customer protection, which we have a whole commissioner. I think we take that very serious. And even myself in the next few weeks, I may have to run around the country just to make sure I have an ear on the ground in terms of customer complaints. Metering for all is something we are, admire and we are doing it. Again, I think it has started as of last week in some part of the country. More supply through renewable energy and through different sources of power like um, eligible customer, franchising area that I started here will also help people to get more power. Access to electricity through smart grid, through renewable energy, that's correct. Security of supply, mixed energy, that's correct. Mixed energy, wind, solar, and, go, and water, and everybody will be happy. And again, governance is critical because if the governance is bad in this disco, we are trying to force them to change and improve. Local content, as I mentioned earlier, is a must. Nigeria made meters, Nigeria made uh, reclosers, Nigeria made transformer is the next thing. So any way you all can work, from abroad, from wherever we are, please, Nigeria is a, a place to think about doing some uh, manufacturing locally and uh, people are ready. Uh, human capital is very important. Like I said, I set up uh, a NEC Academy when I came here, despite the fact that they do go on travels, but thank God we set it up because during COVID we could not travel. So we are still able to grow the human capital here, give them exposure to either not only in the technical work, in the soft skills, as well as in the project management type, you know? This is me and Nick. <laughs> so if I leave tomorrow, don't worry, I'll finish my work. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> now, I think it's important that I just remind you, uh, the Siemens project is ready to go. The proposal I contributed in reviewing, I went to the villa many times, but I think they are putting together uh, execution of the project and purchases and procurement. I told you about performance improvement plan is already approved. And of course, uh, the, our sector reform act, I'm just telling you, is full of a mis misnomer, lot of mistake. So if people are, um, the National Assembly want to review it and they think it's timely because they couldn't have given somebody a job and they're telling him when you get to this age, you are gone. That is not acceptable. And they couldn't have come up with a lot of uh, rules when customer fail to do their work, they go to court against us, it's not acceptable. So all this is vulnerability of the commission. So we are, they are working on it. I don't know the details. <laughs> don't quote me on that. I'm just saying I've come to, they invite me, I have come, I have served, I am done. <laughs> So there is a lot of money from AFDB. There is also a lot of money from the World Bank, which I talked about 750 billion, a million. They're gonna spend more money every, uh, for the next five years. And it's accountability requirement. It's not just collect money and do nothing. They must be accountable and they must be prompt accountability and whatever to make sure that money is well spent. Next one. So in the PSRP, the major intervention government went on this 
to really look at the policies operational and ensure that there's proper governance and regulatory action is taken. So, so many people contribute, the finance ministry, Ministry of Power, Central Bank of Nigeria, but at the end of the day, regulatory issue is ours. The key objective is important to ensure we have a reliable power, we have a viable nursing, and also ensure that there's transparency in the market. Um, it starts from me, transparency. It starts from me. You cannot, we are not ready to compromise in this place. I am not ready. <laughs> so if you don't like me, don't worry. I told you I refuse. Clear policies for growth and contract-based electricity market. That's where we want to be. We are, if we are not there, we will still be going from value chain. We'll be going to Jenko's. We'll, Disco will be going to NBET, NBET to Jenko, Jenko to NOP to gas. No, no, no. We need a situation where the whole thing is now able to talk like it's done in PJM in the US. People know exactly how much power you use. You must pay for it. It's a contract and the quality of power you must also provide. Okay, next one. Now, this long screen here is just a, a lot of talk, but it's of no use. I just say two things. Uh, transition to cost reflective is where we are now. Business continuity, we are planned in case somebody wants to hurt the business, we have a program. Employment uh, enforcement issue is a serious one in our work now. And we call it compliance and enforcement. The view of tariff setting, we must do it regularly. Uh, intervention of fine, uh, funding for future shortfall. Because there are two short, two for two, two, two short for the market short for, and the um, what did I call it? There's a market short for and tariff short for. So the market short for is always coming from the disco. Now they must pay, so they must minimize waste. Clean up disco balance sheet. That's what I said. Determine adequate revenue requirement. So we know what is the minimum money they must pay when the invoice come to them. They can't throw the money and say they have no money. We're going to take that money directly from central bank. So commencement of uh, the competition processes and so on. Here is, uh, I've told you about initiatives. To me, I have a lot of problem. All these initiatives are important, but I don't think we have taken time to coordinate as a system person. And I'm sure Elena would agree with me. There's no coordination. There is no uh, planning or which one comes first, if this one overlap, which one comes in, no, everything, okay, money is coming from everywhere. <sighs> I told you about meter asset, provider regulation is working now because they are forced to provide that meter they bought. Initiative of the president is part of it. CBN is very close to this, also providing seed money to get it done. Uh, the law, we have found out that sometimes there's a lot of litigation and many people try to go to court or file an injunction, but we are overcoming that soon. We have to ensure security of energy, uh, of energy mix, obviously. Promote local content, I've said enough. Forex policy in the power sector to be sure that the money for investors is properly calculated, both for off-grid renewables or incentive for private investors. Otherwise, they won't come. Operational intervention, which is the issue of metering, I've talked about that. Appointment of board members, because it's been said over and over that there is a, a gap in terms of Nigeria to 40% uh, investment into the disco and the disco 60%, but when it comes down to who runs the place, it's not in the same ratio. So there's a lot of work going on to make sure instead of one, instead of three members from a uh, governing body from disco, we want to change that number and that is ongoing work. Hmm? So, and so that at least there will be, everybody will have input in terms of how money is spent and the return on investment and liabilities and so on. So next one. Okay, this is perhaps my last slide. Uh, I think there are still many challenges. Subsidies should go up. I'm asking questions only, nobody asks me. <laughs> I'm the one asking myself questions. And Urena will know I will ask myself a question. Maybe this is my work next. <laughs> if subsidies should go up, the national goals of the government will be seriously challenged. So this is a challenge. So what do we do? This is a challenge because 
what we went through in the last one month. I'm telling you, if remittance of DISCO is not improved and enforcement is stricter, the sector will face liquidity crisis. Enforcement is not stricter, <clears throat> not stricter. If it's not, in other words, if we don't enforce the rules of payback by the DISCO, so how do you force them to pay back? What is the mathematical strict scheme we must put together? Nobody is talking about that. We argue a lot, but there is a need for system theory people to help us look into this challenge. And local and foreign direct investment would run if, <laughs> if the return on investment is poor, obviously. Perception of value of effort by customers will deteriorate if, if the distribution transmission generation is not improved. There's a need therefore, regardless of this, why nobody is talking about the master management. All these are just jumping together, missing opportunity for growth in Nigeria. The solution in my case, we need, I have this, I didn't, um, I'm thinking that the Nigerian networks, the way it is, is not the right one. What do I say? Um, we still have X number of generators, so many discos, so many transmission parts, but, long transmission line with losses, loss of money. But load is far away from where generator is, loss of money. My recommendation is a new design of a decentralized distribution network. I have an idea on that, and that's research work. Where we can take, for example, um, Azura in, in Benin, okay? We can, there's no business there. And the man in Azura has signed a contract with Nigerian government called take or pay. Whether we like it or not, we must pay. We take it or not, we must pay. But there's no business in Azura. So if there is no network connecting to all the way to, to Lagos or to Shobo, then it's no use, you still have to pay. So my solution is, can't we redesign the network? I have put that together, but it's not for discussion today, unfortunately. Okay, but what I'm saying is that you can even provide, um, what is that in the call? Um, a business environment where Olorun Shogo, uh, all those people in, in Kaja there, they can create business in that area and market power quickly to customers. And it will be cheaper and it will be lossless and so on. Another one is allocation strategy. I talked about that, no, franchising. Here at NEC, I, did, I put my mind into this. We have come up with an order of franchising with a guide. So it's already in the public. It gives opportunity for investors to come to Nigeria, look, go to any of the disco, convince them that you want to provide services. And I think that's a good way to go. It's done in India, it's done everywhere else. Resource allocation, I really think of this very highly. What do I mean? Um, I think when I mean that there are many, many options, many, many projects going on in my country. There is no clear court of priority coordination, Pareto usage, AHP that Urena um, that did, did a lot on. We need to use hierarchical processes to do some work here. And I think it has to be done eventually by some research people. I also propose, since I've been here, a need for a research institute and university uh, on energy and power networks, which will help us to solve emerging problem I have started it, I have not started the institute, but I started collaboration with nine Nigerian universities and they are funded by the chairman's uh, discretionary money, um, which is to promote growth. So I have seven, nine universities working. They have written reports. If I show you one of their reports, you will be impressed. Uh, people underestimate our Nigerian university, uh, but I don't because I work with them in the past. So I am funding Amadou Bello University, ATBU, that is Alaji Tafawa Belewa University. Uh, university in Kano, they call it um, um, Bayro. It's seven o'clock. Okay. And then I'm funding University of Benin. I'm funding Futo in Oweri. I have a lot of good friends there. I'm funding Futmina. I'm funding um, what else? I'm funding uh, University of Lagos. 
And funny them, and they are going crazy solving Nigerian problem. They're solving ATCC problem, they're solving reliability problem, they're solving um, how to locate fault in a smart meter metric. Yeah, all kinds of headache. I just sat down one day, they arguing, arguing in commissions. I said, people are wasting my time. Let me give the work out to all people. So I sat down and I saw the opportunity for work. And from there, I reached out to my Nigerian university and told them it's, it's small change, but they are very happy for the first time. Um, industry called Nigerian professors to come and look into the problem of the need of the country. I'm very confident they are writing papers even now for our journal. <laughs> they are writing papers. So, and I'm really happy that I came here. So the next step of my effort in Nigeria or beyond Nigeria is vision for creating and improving standard of living in Nigeria, which will be centered around electricity through quality of power and reliability of power. How do we do that? I don't know, but it's a vision. Coordination of initiatives currently ongoing in the sector so that we can have a proper uh, return on investment and timing. Implementation of maybe a roadmap for the sector in my case, so that we can get all of you who are listening to assist in joining me later on, but I won't be here long and I'm actually on the, on the way out. But the important thing is, I have a dream that one day starting, Nigeria will have their 24 power supply, like I said in January. But to make that dream come true, all hands must be on deck. I can't do it alone. You all can't do it alone. But we must look for low hanging fruits and run with it and tell somebody, you can't stop me. You cannot stop me. Nothing you can stop. I told neck people when I came here, you must not be defined by somebody. You will define yourself. I came here with that attitude. Thank you, God. I do my best. Next one. This is awesome. Thank you so much, Professor Momo. That was very enlightening. Um, you hit touch on the topic. I'm sorry, let me make sure I've muted everybody. Thank you. Okay, everybody is, everybody is muted now. Um, thank you so much, Professor Momo, for that. That was um, amazing. I, I, it's a good thing we're recording this um, uh, webinar because everyone needs to listen to this. You touched on different ways that companies um, and in, individuals can invest in the power industry. Um, there was just so much that you talked about. Um, and, uh, you know, I just wanted to say thank you for that. Um, because of time, we're only going to take a few questions, but before I say that, let me um, exit out of this for a second. I do want to mention that we, um, this, okay, I just want to mention that this um, webinar is brought to you by uh, a professional Africa. Professor Momo had mentioned um, that he, one of the things he's doing is increasing um, uh, or improving learning in um, NERC. And uh, we're, we're actually working together. But uh, again, this webinar is brought to you by professionalafrica.com. I show you um, the website on here. So it's here you have um, soft skills um, and some technical skills and financial markets. So for instance, there are courses on communication there are courses on entrepreneurship, there are courses on cybersecurity, Six Sigma and Lean, among others. So um, for those who can't travel during this pandemic, uh, consider going to professionalafrica.com for your online training. Okay, that being said, let's go over to the questions. Um, so everyone who said thank you, thank you for that. Um, Someone says the Genco claim to be generating power of which the distribution has no capacity to receive and further distribute to households. Could it be that the power problem in Nigeria are associated with the disco? So that's for you, Professor Momo. Oh, let me let me unmute you. You are muted right now. Okay. Um, okay. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. The Jenkos do not com uh, directly communicate to discos. 
The Jenkos sell their power through the system operator, which is owned by TCN. And of course, TCN now dispatch power to discos. Um, the question is, is Disco taking the power from Jenkos? I mean, from TCN? This is where the blame game came from. What you have heard before, they will said, is putting it in the wrong place or is putting it where I cannot make money. But we have overcome that. We have defined under a, a order in the last two, three months where a disco and a Jenko are even as we talk, they're signing a service level agreement. They've signed or they want to finish signing by this week. This agreement allowed them to say, this is what we want, what you say you will give us. If you fail to do so, there'll be penalty. So NEC will penalize whoever fails to meet its own obligation. In the past, we didn't have the order in place. So they could play games with each other and we could just be looking at them. But we've overcome that. In the order that was signed mm -hmm. today is it's included. So I think the day is coming soon when we will be able to get Disco to go directly and buy power from Jenko. So that means the time is not now. But now we are still going to NBET and therefore we're still going to TCN. <laughs> so, and we are still going through the availability of resources from Jenko. So I think you will hear every day in the last two, three weeks, there's a lot of, uh, I won't say noise, happy moment that the generating output has increased. What that means is that there's an agreement that this could sign. Now they are taking it. So if you don't take it, it will go down. Now that they are taking it, everybody is, what, is noticing increase in power delivery in their homes. Were we there yet? No, it's not over. But it's a good thing that it's now 5,000 plus, not the old 3,000, 4,000. So I think that's my quick answer to that, is that okay. we can't rely on that as well. There's other option. We should still encourage off-grid power. Nigeria cannot just say we are going to rely on gas, uh, gas power from different places. They should still encourage um, what I call renewable energy. They should encourage um, other method of willing buyer, willing seller. We are, you make a deal that I want to buy and I want to sell. <laughs> and that's happening already. And this service-based tariff is also in the direction of forcing custom, um, this cost to start taking power because they have signed a contract that they will buy X. If they fail to do that, there will be punitive measure taken. And we also do the same for, gen, uh, for transmission company. They better have the network available. Then the gen cost, so everybody is on board. <laughs> Everybody ought to be on board. So okay. I think we have left a, a good foundation of how to do this. So it's going to be a, what, something we'll be watching and following up and do our needful in terms of we are our regulatory heart and enforcement. Great. Really thank, you, so. <laughs> thank you. There are lots of comments here. People saying thank you so much for this presentation. Uh, someone called Mike says, thanks, Professor. Please don't leave NERC now. <laughs> so <laughs> we have some more questions, but for the sake of time, we won't answer them today. What I'm going to do is um, this webinar is being recorded and I'm going to put it up on the professionalafrica.com slash videos website. And I'm going to send um, your additional questions to Professor Momo so that during the week he can respond to them. And I will then go ahead and put them on... Um, on the website, or if, if you haven't registered on, on the professionalafrica.com website to register, I will send you the link to this uh, recording and then you can go and put, uh, put your questions there directly and Professor Momo can respond. Uh, but this was a very great presentation. I'm keeping tr track of your questions and uh, we just want to say a big thank you again to Professor Momo um, for this presentation. Excuse and, me. Uh, Excuse me. Yes. Yes, that Mr. Mike. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I need to break this protocol. I am very sorry, Professor. Thank you. 
I think you are one of the Nigerian elder that I've had in the past 17 years that give me hope in Nigeria. Mm. So thank you for that. Uh, I'm, I'm thank very, you. I'm, thank you. I'm, 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 my words, I, I don't just give out my words. In the last 17 years, you are the only person that I've had that I've given hope. And that I, from what that you share, that has the interest of the people while delivering your job to the government. So you mm -hmm. have the human part of it. But I need to give a quick feedback which the host will not like. I, I, I have listed so many things. Number one, beneath disco, there is something happening that they refuse to give me time to collect money. And they are, they are, the area they are covering is too much. People are paying, they, are, they don't get meter. They don't, people are paying. I know people that, that want to pay now, and some of the marketers say there is no meter, they will just collect your money. That is not a good statement. And number two, Ibadan, where they are covering is too large. It's too large. Bini and Ibadan, they are too large. Their performance ratio is very low. Now, I'm going to be running, I have about 10, and I know the host might pause me anytime. Let us consider embedded modular power generation. At the moment, I am running on generator. It does not, that will reduce the load on the network. And how can that be done? Each state can be licensed to generate power and they go out under the supervision of NEC and get their technical partners like whatever happens in any other country. So if Lagos is generating power, for instance, that load on the network will reduce. We know the networks are as old as uh, Nigeria. So if Ogu is generating, then the, the load on the network will reduce. So mm -hmm. they will be generating on their own. So when they have excess, that is when they turn on the interlock to feed the little they have in excess and they feed it to the national grid. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you license each state, go and, go, go and license each state and let them generate power and take them off grid. When you have excess, drop the little excess. I can tell you personally, the capping is not working. The capping mm. is not working. I have a case that was brought to my attention in the Kedja Disco. Sorry, it's, sorry, it's, Mr. Mike. If you, what you can do, if you can please send me your email address, then uh, perhaps I can send it to Professor Momo uh, in, if he wants to continue this the conversation. But for the sake of time, we really need to um, cut off now. I really thank you for your uh, questions and your comments, and I'm very grateful that you joined us today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I broke the protocol, but the professor okay. needs to hear for stand uh, feedback. Thank you. <laughs> Don't worry. I will deal with. Uh... Sorry, Prof. I muted you by mistake. Could you please unmute yourself? Okay. Professor Momo, can you still, let me see. I think I have now, Professor Momo, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, okay, great. You are saying something. No, I was just telling you, you should go ahead and submit, uh, send to you any further question. We'll be very happy okay. to object him because whatever is, is ongoing now may be different from what happened on Monday. On Monday, we'll be signing a new order for CAPI and he doesn't know, to make sure things are improved. So a lot of things like that, maybe okay. just in time to answer those questions. But we appreciate the embedded generation issue is very good. And of course, that's part of the franchising thing I mentioned. Yeah. All you need to do is write a letter, propose, get a no objection permit from us, and you get um, approval from your disco of choice. And then you are, you are it's, we have no choice, we have to do it. Because, like you said, Ibini or Ibadan Disco, they are just too large to take care of all the different states as, as around them. For example, Edo State, they're taking care of uh, Bini, is taking care of all of Edo, um, Undo, um, Delta, 
and then um, what other one? Uh, equity. So that's a lot of work. Whereas if you can, I'm not saying we should divide the country into another set of generating power discourse, but the networking is the design of the new network where power could reach out closer to people, closer to the people who need it, rather than running crazy to supply power to everybody. It's not what, it's not going to last in Nigeria. Okay. And we have, a, we have an idea how to design that. So one day we'll bring it to Irena. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Professor Momo. Um, I know that you're very busy and yet you took out time for this presentation. So I want to say thank you so much and we'll continue our conversations um, offline. Thank you everyone for joining. If you have additional questions, please remember to either send it in the chat room or look out for when this uh, video comes online and put your questions um, on there and we'll answer it for you. Thank you so much again and have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.